Daddy lived a purpose-filled life, and even in his death, he has no regrets. He served his country with all the diligence that he had. He believed in the revolution and always strived to ensure that all the achievements were maintained. He loved and believed in the army and the commander-in-chief. Every graduation, Daddy was present. You'll probably see from the order of service a few pictures of us celebrating graduations with Daddy. Daddy was an energy, not even a human being. And when we cry, it's not so much that we are grieving the death of our father because we knew he was at peace as he left, but it's more so that we will miss the energy that he was and the presence, the smile, the laughter, and all the good memories that he was able to create with us. Daddy did not go anywhere without his camera, always taking pictures and videos of every event, every individual he thought worth it. It's interesting being here at a time like this because one thing Daddy did was involve us so much in all of his work. I remember coming to this airstrip as a child and sitting through those long, winded state functions, <laughs> thinking, I can't wait to go home and eat. But Daddy loved us so much, he wanted us to be part of everything that he did. One fond memory I have of Daddy was while he was at the Kimaka Staff College in Jinja. I remember he bundled us all up. Actually, I think he may have sent cars to pick us. And we went to meet him there. I think we were probably the only few families that went to join the other senior officers while they went through the course. And I remember us having a beautiful time with him. He took us around Jinja to the source of the Nile. Daddy was proud of Uganda. He loved its beauty, the nature, fresh air, food, and the blessings that this country has to offer. I have so many memories that I could pick sharing with daddy, but I'll just touch on a few that really left a mark on my heart. In 2017, daddy and I went on a trip to Kazo, Remkoma Mkuru, his home village that he loves so much. And while on the trip, he told me so many stories about his life, his relationship with his family, his parents, his siblings. He told me about the bush war and how blessed he was to be able to live a life where he can now see us grown up, many of us graduated and working, and others having even started families. It was on that note I was very quick to jump in with my word and assure him, Daddy, I found someone. Nde, he said. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> he said, I have a special friend that I would like you to meet. Daddy was very cautious and took his time with important decisions. His advice was, take your time, study him, and when the time is right, you will know. I dare say my father knew me, probably more than I knew myself, and more than most people know me. I followed his advice, took my time, and when the time was right, I introduced my now husband, Mr. Ron Kamara. <laughs> he 
Daddy was so proud. I remember dancing so much with him at the wedding. It's like he told me, "Hona shimwa na we, kawazaku nchamagul." But that was Daddy. Whatever accomplishment you had, he was ready to celebrate with you. And especially if it was to do with his children, he was always ready to participate. The one thing I have in common with my father is that we're both creatives. I'm not so much an artist. Actually, my art skills are very poor. But the, the one thing we share is we both write music. I remember Daddy was very adamant about involving us in his first November celebrations, to the point where he asked my sister and I, Shara, to perform. We were very excited. But that was his way of showing that he was proud of whatever talents that we had, and he always encouraged us to harness them. One of the best things that I will always hold dear was the chance to be able to work with Daddy on his book that was a collaboration with Professor Gilbert where he was able to document the NRM revolution as his proofreader. It was a long process, but finally the book was commissioned And I wish you all get an opportunity to write that book. To read that book, sorry. The next memory I'll speak of when it comes to Daddy is the final visit that we had when he was still a bit strong. I managed to go there with my daughter, Bella. And in his true fashion, he loved his grandchildren. He would always sing to them. And for Bella, he had a special song. <laughs> she would truly miss him. Daddy really wanted to share these with me in that moment. And he had shared them over time. But looking back now, in that moment, it was more important than ever. He was like, do you know the 10 things that are the most beautiful in life? Of course, I had heard this before. But I could tell he wanted to reiterate, as it was his normal way to always teach and impart something in not just us, but everyone he met. And he was like, all of these things are free. Thank God. A laugh, a hug, a smile, God's love, love for family, and unity. Daddy. I remember coming to Nairobi. You always told us that this day would come, not just for you, but for everyone. And you always spoke so candidly about death. Nothing, however, could have prepared us for seeing a man who was always in control always ready to take action, always present, look so weak. I remember the day before, you rested. We went into the hospital room with Brenda, and for some reason were compelled to say everything on our hearts. We always said, Peace was the most immeasurable thing. 
and you always greeted people by saying, peace be with you. I played you back the video that you had recorded during COVID time, encouraging all people to always make peace with God, themselves, and it is only then that they will be able to have peace with their spouse, their family, their community, and last but not least, nature. I knew you were at peace in that moment. And as we left the room, I remember singing and playing for you one of your favorite compositions, Nkaguma Nkareva. I love you, Daddy. We love you. Your spirit will forever live on in us and in every single person you've touched, which has been my greatest joy in this difficult time. We know how much you loved us. That goes without a doubt. But it's especially more moving to meet people you've never, strangers, come up to you every single day giving you different accounts of how daddy touched their lives. You're so special, daddy, we love you. His Excellency the President, retired um, right honorable speaker of parliament lordship his lordship your lordship chief justice okay. all protocol observed okay may god give me the strength to speak many of you know him as a battle-hardened army general and a seasoned artist, iconic leader in his in his in the Bahinda clan, a patriot, a friend, to mention but a few. To me, he was my boss, my dad. Daddy was one of a kind. He was unapologetically himself, unique in expression, passion, and values. He was a teacher, always happy to share his passions with all, he inter with all the people he interacted with. From the smallest to the biggest, he did not um, segregate. He would always say, that we are to walk in our uniqueness and not to try to copy others, but rather find the value that we can add with the uniqueness that God created in us individually. He would say that there is only one Tumwine who will ever exist and no one will ever be like him. He truly lived his dream and enjoyed his life. Starting from his childhood upbringing, Daddy loved cows, most especially collecting the beautiful long-horned Ankole cows. It is also greatly expressed in his artwork and sketches and designs. He had such a strong sentimental value towards them that some of his prized bulls and calves would never be sold but grow old, grow old and die and he would bury them. He loved his cows. He was an artist in multiple spheres, from fashion to art on canvas, music, and photography. His love on campus started from the time he found out that he was going to be the sole breadwinner of his family after losing his father. He decided to start a photography business on campus and made a good living from it alongside his art and was able to finish university while looking after his family and has done do and, and has done so until now. 
for music. He was part of a band in his high school and has always loved to sing. He got to make a music album with music videos that are now going viral. And, and though some found it strange for a general to do so, he was being uniquely himself and not letting titles hold him back from enjoying what he loves and wishes to do. Daddy was a fashion designer and took no pleasure in the suit and tie look. He believed that a tie was like a noose around the wearer's neck. His conviction about this was so strong that he refused to conform to the parliamentary dress code some time back and was kicked out. So being the artist that he is, he got a t-shirt, printed a tie and a waistcoat on it and wore a jacket on top and went to parliament. <laughs> Eventually this policy was scrapped and thus birthed the name of the famous Tumwine suit. He loved his country. He was passionate about seeing Uganda secure and developing. A lot has been said about his statementship, but let me add this. Whenever he would travel out of the country, he would always say there is no place like Uganda. And that's the inspiration of his song, I Know No, to endeavor to capture his love for Uganda as a, as a physical destination. He loved his family, not only his biological, biological children, but his greater family. We were born into a full house and would not be less than 20 to 50 at a time uh, in the Kololo house. Our childhood and to our adult, our adult life was full of constant company. That was his big and generous heart. He was a father to many. Daddy loved his grandchildren. He would light up whenever he would see them. He would compose individual songs for each and every one of them. He always said they are the best gift and reward to being a parent. They were blessed to have enjoyed their Shwenkuru. Last but not least, Daddy loved my mother. And his expression of love was to give to you with what he loved, be it an art piece or a cow. I remember one story, he was, in, he was preparing for an art exhibition and mommy came down to wait with him and ended up dozing off. He stopped what he was doing, got a fresh canvas and started painting a picture of my mom sleeping in the chair. And it hung fondly in our house for a very long time. He loved her deeply and had great admiration for mommy. He would always boast and call her Ihangai Reto and, sorry, my bad. As he was a father to many, it was because mom was a mother to them. He was down to earth and there's no one he met or interacted with that he did not befriend. A few hours with him and he would be sharing stories with timid people who would not believe how down to earth he was. Daddy was once, what, was once asked what his definition of a good father was. And he said, to have the respect of my sons and the love of my daughters. He excelled on this above and beyond. And we are testament to this. Daddy was a man of principle, true to God, to us, and to himself. There were no versions of him. He loved us passionately, mentored us, and showed up for us in all ways, as my sister has shared. I am grateful to God, to God for the privilege of having experienced all these great, great years. Rest in peace, Daddy. I love you. Praise God. Uh, all protocol observed. The chief mourner, sorry, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, Mama Janet, the clergy. I'll not go into those details. But I want to thank God so much for my father's life, and I thank you all for coming to celebrate with us his life. Um, the song that was sung before we started, Through Changing Scenes of Life, has really encouraged me, and I'm sure I'm going to speak very well. Daddy lived a purpose filled life, and even in his death, he has no regrets. He served his country with all the diligence that he had. He believed in the revolution and always strived to ensure that all the achievements were maintained. 
he loved and believed in the army and the commander in chief of the UPDF and always talked highly of him. My prayer is that whatever he fought for can remain alive. Amen. Most importantly, his love for Christ. He loved Christ with everything that he had and he mentored us, mentored us in that way. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, before he died, he lived, um, before he died, he made peace with God and with man. I'll just tell you that as a family, we want to forgive those who have said whatever they've said about him, the social media, because probably they don't know what they're doing or what they're saying, because he asked God to forgive him, and the rest is going to be upon them to handle it with their God. The reason is very simple. They'll all die at one time. And the second thing is that the person they're hating on is in heaven with God. I want to thank <laughs> His Excellency the President of Uganda for personally ensuring that my father got all the care that he wanted. I know my father kept it a secret that he was not well, but when he found out he did everything in his part to make sure he was well together with the UPDF. Um, Uncle has already talked about the people who helped. I want to thank Dr. Omodin for and the team for being selfless. They did all they could to make sure he was well, but God, that was the appointed time that he was supposed to go. Omodin and your team, may God richly bless you. And the relatives, my aunties that traveled to Nairobi to be with mommy, thank you for supporting her because of the difficult time. I want to thank our husband and our wife for being there for us. I want to thank my siblings for the support and the love they showed daddy. The last two weeks before, the week before he went to Nairobi, we were always in the hospital and he was like, wow, this is a reunion. I wish this could continue. Then he had plans of uh, December holiday or something, but God did not let it happen. But I'm sure that daddy saw the solidarity and he knows that we shall remain united as a family and nothing will break us. Special thanks go to mommy for being the glue that has held us together. If it had not been for her, we would have been scattered. But I thank you for remaining true to your vows up to this time. Our last 14 days with him were a fairness where my mother, Brenda, and those who joined us later were tested to the core. The U.S. Navy SEALs, considered by many as one of the most elite soldiers in the world, have five and a half days of intense training, also known as Hell Week. It is the hardest and most grueling week in their training. In the few or many years of my life, these 14 days were that for me, and I was not a Navy SEAL. <sighs> to see your father look at you and tell you the words you fear the most, not with his mouth, but with his eyes, and in daddy's case, with one eye, is one of the hardest things I have experienced. To come day after day and see that look, that face that carried a smile and hearty laughter, be the same face that told you his last words and love, all wrapped in one, was truly a tough one. But we had help. I or we had help. And it carried us through. Who was this help, you wonder? It was not a man, no medicine, no intellect, none of that, nothing. It was the one and only Almighty God. He used men, medicine, and intellect, as well as time, to show us who is truly in charge. Even to the end, he did not forsake us. Even to this very moment, he has not forsaken us. We had our own motto during this time. It was something we learned during one of our many morning devotionals. God is with us and God is working. My observations and conclusions. One, in the end, all roads lead to God. No matter who you are or what you do, it begins and ends with him. Amen. Two, Family is God's first choice for the people you should think with, plan with, and do most of the things in this world. Three, 
Taking the best responsibility for family and working in whatever way you can is more important than being perfect. Four, who my father was, I cannot be, at least not by myself. That's a task for all of us standing